type of attitude can be encouraged with STEM learning. Last but not least, it encourages teamwork. STEM education can be taught to students of all ability levels. Students of varying levels of ability can work together in teams to find solutions to problems, record data, write reports, give presentations, and etc. The end result is students who understand how to collaborate with others and thrive in a team-orientated environment. Other advantages might include Encouraging knowledge application In STEM education, students are taught skills that they can use in the real world. This motivates them to learn, as the skills acquired can be utilized immediately and in ways that positively impacts them and their loved ones. The ability to apply knowledge to new and novel tasks will bode well for them when they enter the workforce. Other than that, it encourages tech use. STEM learning teaches kids about the power of technology and innovation. So, when the students encounter new technologies, they will be prepared to face them, instead of being hesitant or fearful. This will give them the upper hand in the global scale as the world is becoming more tech-centered. More so, it teaches problem solving. STEM education teaches students on how to solve problems by using the critical thinking skills. By engaging in STEM learning experiences, students are able to examine problems and then create a plan to solve them. Last but not least, it encourages adaptation. To succeed in life, students must be able to apply what they have learned to various scenarios. STEM education teaches students on how to adapt the concepts that they have learned to various iterations of problems or issues. That is all for me. Thank you.
Assalamualaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. We're back again. <clears throat> All right. So I'm sure everyone is well informed of the rules. Okay. So for this afternoon session, we only have three presenters left. All right. And please be sure to fill in the attendance form. If you have already did so during the morning session, you don't have to do it again. All right, so the attendance form will be provided uh, on the chat on the chat box here. All right, so uh, for the first presenter, are you ready? But before that, uh, I think uh, we would like to hear for a greeting from our director of PASTEM, Dr. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Laili. Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. On behalf of the MT STEM Foundation as the organizer, a warm welcome and selamat datang to all of you. Heartfelt gratitude is extended to all distinguished speakers and participants for coming and participating in this iSystem 2021. I sincerely hope that all of our effort in sharing and exchanging ideas throughout this conference will create and enhance public interest as well as awareness on the importance of science, technology, engineering and mathematics known as STEM. It is hoped that everyone enjoy this virtual conference under the new norm and may you have a delightful and fruitful deliberation throughout the conference with us. With that note, I wish all of you happy conferencing and thank you. Uh, mohon peserta bersabar sebentar ya uh, sebab chairperson uh, ada yang masak dasar nikah sikit. Uh, sementara tu nak dapat confirmation daripada cikgu Tini. Uh, cikgu Tini akan mainkan slide sendiri kan? Ah Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah, InsyaAllah. Uh, okay cikgu. Okay, thank you. Kita tunggu cek pesan sekejap eh, Puan Hani. Dia ada masalah tak ni ke sikit.
Hi, I'm sorry, we're back again. Apparently there's a blackout in my house. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so without further ado, I'm so sorry for the delay. Say good evening. It's okay. All right. So Cikgu Dina, are you going to present live? Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Puan Nur Farhani. Nice to see you again. All right, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh, and a very good afternoon. It is an honor for me today and privilege to have you all uh, as a distinguished expert and knowledgeable with me today. So I'm Hartini. So let's uh, before that I share try to share the screen first. All right, hold on. All right. Can you see my screen? Uh, okay, can you see my screen? But the okay, saya go. Boleh ya, boleh. Boleh, boleh. Nampak. Okay, saya tak boleh nampak ni. Okay, so I'm Hatini from Sekolah Menengah Kemasaan Sultan Ismail, Kota Baru, and to here is my uh, our collaborations. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Norawi Ali from USMP Nen. Professor Madia Dr. Laili Cik Rus from uh, UMT. Uh, Cikgu, I'm... interrupt, sorry. Yes. Uh, boleh yeah. buat uh, slide show? Okay, sekejap. Sebab dia, eh, ni ada sekejap eh. Saya kena uh. buat ni. Slide show kat sini. Terus saya kena. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All okay. right. All right. Thank you. Sorry, eh. Yeah. And Professor, let's start again. So, I'm Hartini from Sekolah Menengah Kebasaran Sultan Ismail. Uh, Kata Baru and Tos here is our collaborator, Dr. Muhammad Norawi Ali from USM Penang, Professor Madia Dr. Daidi Cik Ros from UMT, uh, Terengganu, Professor Madia Dr. Ali Shamsuddin from USM Penang. So, so in this lovely afternoon, I'm going to give hospitality presentations on STEM Agro project which have been held on during MCO. So this presentation, uh, we cover two subtopics, whereby we, we start with introduction, and next, the problem statement. Furthermore, we continue with research objective, and then methodology, then we go to the uh, theoretical and conceptual framework, then followed by finding and finally the conclusions. Right. So as we know that we are now facing the pandemic COVID-19 infections, which has a healthy emergen health emergency. So uh, our students uh, face a problem in, in our society, we face a problem in getting the food, in getting the vegetable, uh, vegetable to buy the vegetable and so on. So this crisis, uh, I think the food crisis, especially, at the start of this global crisis, and it's also happened in other countries. <clears throat> so, yeah. so here, this, uh, we introduce our student uh, with STEM Agro project, okay, uh, go through uh, engineering design process, okay. So this is uh, engineering design process which contain five phases, as, imaging, uh, plan, uh, create, and improve. Okay, we combine this with exploration learning since this is outdoor, I mean, out of uh, formal classroom setting. Okay, so this exploration learning theory, which consists of experiences, reflecting, thinking, and acting. 
So here is the combinations of EDP and EL in STEM agro project. All right. And this is the step, right? <clears throat> Whereby the in the face of uh, imaging, we go to the experiencing. Okay, after this, uh, I, I will go more detail about this uh, combination of EDP and EL. Right. So this is the problem statement, financial problem faced by our student, food shortage. Uh, shortage. So we uh, encourage students to expand their thinking skill in solving their problem. As we know that students spend more time at home, so we need to develop the pedagogical strategies that can link between the school and home. So our research question is, okay, what we what we look for here is only two skills. That's our problem solving skills with its sub skills. And the problem solving skill, we have two sub skill. Define problem and analyze the probably source of the problem. In turn of time, pre test, post test one, and delay post test. And for the research question two, we are going to find out their creative thinking skill, which consists of two sub skill also flexibility and curiosity in terms of time pre-test, post-test, and delay post-test. Okay, so what we are going to do methodology is, this is a process assembling for the student for the STEM club. We have a STEM club at our school. So this is one of the STEM club activity. Okay, we give them the pre-test using Google Form to know their uh, problem solving skill and creative thinking skill at the preliminary stage. After that, we give them the STEM project, STEM agro, we let them to find out which type of vegetable they love to plant. Okay, we guide them through the uh, Google Mix. Okay. After that, we give them the post test to know the increment, the difference the, about the uh, problem solving scale, uh, critical thinking scale. Is there any improvement or not? Okay. And then uh, after two weeks, we give them the uh, second post test, or we know uh, we said we has no has a delay post test because there's no intervention after that. So this is a delay post test given two weeks after the post test using Google Form. Okay, so we analyze this data using MANOVA, right? So this is the theoretical and conceptual framework in uh, combinations of EDP and EL instead of agro uh, project. Okay, when you look here, uh, the, the blue one is EDP, okay? And the red one is EL, exploration learning. So how we combine here in the face of uh, EDP us students need to think. This is exploration learning combined here. So in the space of imaging, students also need to think, find more information. And before they start acting or experiencing, they need to plan and create. Okay. And to make improvements, students need to reflect in what they have done. Yeah. So this is the finding. Okay, we found that the problem solving scale increase from the pre-test to post-test and to the delay post-test. This is a problem solving and this is a sub-skills. Okay, the increment shows that the improvement in student problem solving skills and its sub-skills. Same also for the creative thinking skill. So the increment from uh, pre-test, post-test one, and delay, post-test, right? So this is the finding conclusions. Uh, the increment in problem solving, 2.66, and at the end, 4.33. Creative thinking scale, 2.66 to 4.2. Define problem 
2.75 increase to 4.25 and analyze the source of problem from 2.6 to 4.21 and also in flexibility the sub skill for creative thinking skill is increased from 2.63 and to 4 to uh, 4.14 and the curiosity 2.63 increased to 4.14 same but let's show the increasement right so that we can conclude that there's were a difference in the mean score for problem solving skill and its sub skills which consists of a defined problem analyze the probably source of the problem in turn of pretest, post-test, and delay process. There also there was a difference in the mean score for creative thinking scale and its subscale in turn of flexibility and curiosity. Okay. So can uh, yeah, I conclude that uh, the STEM Agro project and our students to be involved in a problem solving approach and creative thinking skills. So the student free to carry out their learning process in any way that is convenient for them outside the classroom. Okay, so at this moment, we need to create in the learning activity that are relevant to real life will help students develop their knowledge and problem solving skill, as well as the ability to deal with real issue. So I would like to share with you the video of my student. All right, for a few minutes. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry. All right. Uh, cikgu. Yeah. Tak ada tak ada sound cikgu. Tak ada sound. Alright, sit. Uh. Alright. Okay. Uh, cikgu share tu tak niat yang optimize video, motion and sound. Dekat mana eh? Dekat share, masa dekat share tu nanti. Ataupun saya nak, nak saya share kan. Ah, share tak nak. Okey. Cikgu cikgu stop dulu eh. Dah stop eh. Ha. Tak share. Boleh? Sekejap lagi eh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Zuraizat I, And I'm from SMGSI So today I'm at my neighbor garden And I'm in his backyard um, So I have been getting I have begun helping my neighbor since MCO um, And after it is the STEM Agro project I learned a lot from this project I also help my family to cut up a little budget No need to buy egg plane chill and pull out. Just be here. Also can give it to other servants. Hi, I am Adeline from SMKSI. I am here today at my garden behind my backyard. I have begun helping my father with his plan since MCO started. After entering STEM Agro project, I learned a lot from this project. I also can help my family to cut off a little budget. No need to buy lemon, chili and ulam. Just pick here. Also, can give it to others family. So this is one of the plants that I help my neighbor garden. This is Lady Finger.
hindi ko pinawarin. Kulungan eh. Hello. Uh, okay. Okay. Betul. So I think that's all my presentations. Tidak tahu lagi mana. Alright, thank you. Welcome. Ini, alright. Now uh, open for Q and A. Uh, open for question from panelists. I see we have a few questions here. Cikgu Tini on the chat box. Alright, I next see the chat box. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I know how to make sure? Okay, this is component. I have the question eh, which I adopt and adapt from uh, the other country, and I done the EFA before give to the, my student. Okay. <coughs> this is really uh, thank. You. What lead you to pick the engineering design process to, to do it for? Because EDP, uh, we we have IBSE, we have EDP, but we, you can pick any anything you feel suitable uh, to your student. That means it's up to you. But I prefer EDP because it's very simple. Okay, any question? Right. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Jagatini and Mr. Byron and Dr. Sal for the questions. All right. Uh, so if there is no more uh, uh, questions, I think we can proceed to another presenter. Good job, uh, Jagatini. Our next presenter, oh, by the way, before I forgot, uh, Jigutini, may I uh, reconfirm the title of your research, uh, Fostering Student Involvement in Agriculture Through STEM Agro Project, Sweet Potatoes Production During Movement Control Order, MCO, Enhance Students' Problem Solving Skills and Creative Thinking Skills. I got it right? Jigutini, can you please unmute? <coughs> Okay, I just take off the potato sweet. Ah, okay. Uh, sweet potato. Okay, because right. I I leave to them which plants, which vegetable they love to. Okay, to plant. All right. All right. So this true stem agro project during movement control order. Yep. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, move on to the next presenter. Benny Lau. Sorry, Benny Lau Juzen from SMK Taman Desa Jaya, Johor, with the title Algudu Based Maybe Physics job. Learning Integration into Digital Learning Environment towards Development of 21st Century Skills. Please welcome Mr. Benny. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, so actually, I have uh, attached to the, the, uh, my pre-recorded video. So uh, can the host please uh, play the recorded video for me? Thank you. All right, in a moment. Good afternoon. My name is Penny Lao Shuizhen. I'm serving as a secondary high school physics and science teacher in SNK Tamadi Sejaya, Pasipoda. Today, I would like to present my concept paper entitled Algodoo Based Physics Learning Integration into Digital Learning Environment Towards Development of 21st Century Skills. In parallel to the evolution and emergence of IR 4.0, our education system has also been driven for changing in order to fulfill the requirement and trends on how people should learn at recent times. Recent statistics have been urging the importance of transforming our education, particularly STEM education, in order to prepare our future generations with 21st century skills. For example, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2019 reported that most of 2030's jobs have not been invented yet. 
that's at all 2018 also brought the concern that 80 percent of the skills trained for in the past 15 years can now be outperformed by machines furthermore it was reported that by education performance and delivery unit padu uh, it was reported that a million of jobs opportunities are stem based and a million of stem careers are needed furthermore Kaz and Dobrik 2014 also highlighted that for each half of every two STEM careers, computing skills are necessary. So these statistics have definitely raised the awareness that STEM education should highlight the acquisitions of 21st century skills instead of solid academic performances. Moreover, since 2017, the introduction of integrating computational skill, computational skill into all subjects in this context physics a new curriculum of cases and po points out that computational thinking as one of the thinking skills they are required to summarize and solve problems in STEM practice. Since December 2019, the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic led to immediate school closures for 107 countries until 18 March 2020. In this COVID-19 era, the need for innovative solutions to optimize education by improvising with new technologies has affected directly or indirectly, according to Amazon at all 2020. For example, mobile learning was found to ensure the continuity of teaching for students, regardless of the circumstances caused by this pandemic, according to Nasiri at all 2020. In other words, we hope that even though the class are suspended, students can still continue learning, according to Zan at all 2020. In Malaysia education context, teachers and students, they have to adapt new normal of learning which utilize a variety of ways for accessing learning resources, especially through e-learning platform provided by the Ministry of Education 2020. Hence, there are three main objectives of this concept paper. Number one is to determine the challenges and problems in physics learning among Malaysian students. Number two is to identify how algodo physics learning contributes to the development of 21st century learnings among students based on previous studies. And last but not least, the objective is to revise and review what are the research gaps regarding algorithm physics learning in past studies? So based on these three objectives, there are three research questions to be answered in this paper. Number one, what are the challenges and problems in physics learning among Malaysian students? Number two, how did algorithm physics learning contribute to the development of 21st century learnings among students based on previous study? And last but not least, what are the research gaps found regarding algorithm physics learning in past studies? Allow me to give you some literature review about this paper. Number one, we will focus about Algodoo. So why is Algodoo? Algodoo is a drawing tool which is designed and developed by PAN since 28 for education and entertainment purpose. Unlike other simulations like that, uh, which tends to focus on simulating specific phenomena by allowing limited changing parameters only. Algodoo actually allows us to create many opportunities and possibilities for users to freely change many parameters. Besides, Algodoo creates virtual laboratory or activities according to students' needs. It also offers a rich repository of possibilities for different representations. Furthermore, Algodoo actually accommodates graphic analysis for more than 20 variables according to Luki and Kusti Journal 2017. So Algodoo can be considered as an example of micro work in physics education. But the problem is, it has not been researched thoroughly, according to Euler and Gregor C. 2019, since this program has only been used for a KK or about 10 years. In physics learning, many topics such as force and motion, light, Archimedes principle, and even the new cases and topics such as Kepler's law can be studied by conducting visual experiments which stimulates the actual phenomenon by using algo-do. According to Harris and Kumar 2018, digital learning environment, sometimes known as course management systems or learning management systems, are software applications used in distributing and managing educational course materials and lessons. Past studies have found that digital learning environment significantly has the potential of providing many benefits towards teachers and students. For example, the 2017 in his studies claim that the digital learning environment significantly provides abundant opportunities for students to improve their experiences and engagement in order to achieve higher order competences and learning outcomes. This is also crucial for students to be always self-regulating their own learning, even without the presence of teacher. 
This is also critical for teachers to understand what are the impacts for students learning when their role shifts from just being a teacher to a facilitator. In Malaysia context, the quality of system and are satisfactory of service according to teacher training division 2016 and also heavy workload according to Awang et al. 2018 in PRE since 2012 through one Mestari Net project has forced an alternative to achieve the vision of digitalizing Malaysia education through the alternative of rebranding, um, which is called the LIMA, Digital Education Learning Initiative Malaysia. 21st century learning environment requires students to possess 21st century skills. According to Hashburger 2016, National Education Association NEA has analyzed and constructed a framework composing four main skills that must be fostered by students. They are critical thinking, creative thinking, or communication and collaborations, or we call 4C skills. These four skills, in fact, can also be found in Physics DSKP by Ministry of Education 2018. Even though the latter divided into two aspects, that is in thinking skills as well as career and living skills. Grover 2018 proposed that the fifth 21st century skills, known as computational thinking skills, should be added as another core skill to be taught to all students, especially in solving problems related to STEM. Therefore, this research reformulates the 21st century skills from four C's to five C's with the addition of computational thinking skill, which is one of the vital skills for solving problems in this context. So what is computational thinking? Computational thinking, undeniably, is a thinking skill which should be acquired by everyone, according to Lok Wu and Moni 2017, as it is relatively important to basic skills such as reading, writing, and computing, according to Wing 2006. The ADAF et al. 2017 claimed that this type of thinking skill, which is derived from computer science, can be applied to solve problems in all aspects. For example, Edison 2016 explicated five main components of computational thinking. This comprises, this comprises problem, decomp problem decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, algorithm, as well as evaluation. Or findings and discussion. To answer research question one, what are the challenges and problems in physics learning among major students? Research statistics have shown students' achievement in science and 21st century skills are not satisfactory, specifically among major students. For example, based on the result in Program for International Student Assessment, PISA 2018, measure students' achievement in science has dropped from rank 46 with mean score of 443 in 2015 to rank 49 with mean score of 438. Critical to elaborate, measure students' overall achievement is still under the global average score with 489. This could be due to the minimal acquisition of 21st century skills, such as creative problem solving across all levels of education from secondary to tertiary level. Number two, the crisis of having a decline in interest of STEM is becoming one of the most critical issues in STEM education, according to Tembo and Lee 2017. In Malaysia, Ministry of Education has established a special committee for improving the implementation of STEM educational blueprint. But statistics show that only 47% of students were following STEM stream. Even until 2019, Dr. Masdi Malik, former Minister of Ministry of Education, brought the concern that the number of students enrolling STEM has dropped to 44% compared to 49% in 2012. So one of the main reasons is due to students perceiving physics as a difficult subject. Besides, previous study has also highlighted some difficulties and challenges faced by physics students in Malaysia. So for example, Lee 2013 found that students have problems in applying physics concepts in solving STEM-based problems due to the inability in mastering both physics and mathematics con concepts, one way instructional method in active engagement of student-centered learning. Besides, past researches also proved that instructional method could contribute to negative perception of students towards physics subject. For instance, teaching method which is not engaging students actively, according to Tempo and Lee 2017, cause students to feel more easily as they are more enthusiastic towards a variety of visualization and animations, according to Sira and Sima Juta 2019. To answer research question number two, how did algorithm physics learning contribute to the 
development of 21st century learnings among students based on previous studies. Basically, there were two main research designs on studying algorithm based on previous research in these three, 10 years. First, some researchers aim to develop algorithm module but did not evaluate its impact. For example, Ruki and Kusti Jono 2017, they used research and development design to build a learning module for enhancing science process skills of students based on parabolic motion topic. Some other researchers focus on the impact of implementing algorithm in teaching and learning process. So for example, Yulu and Gregor C 2019, they conducted two cases study on how algorithm served as a less phenomenon specific digital learning environment. Interesting to discover from his finding that Algodoo actually creates collaborative spaces for students to expand their creativity by describing many virtual objects which cannot be achieved by traditional laboratories. It's also significant to note that many researchers only focus on certain aims, for example, developing and validating module or studying implementation of Algodoo learning only, but not both. So there's a need to conduct a more holistic research which, compos which, compos which comprises both development of module as well as its impact of more inspects. Last but not least, I would like to answer research question number three. What are the research gaps found regarding algorithm physics learning in past studies? So there are five summary points that I would like to highlight. Number one, most of the previous studies only focus on single theory while integrating algorithm learning. Number two, the approaches of integrating algorithm into physics learning were emphasizing on simulation. That is to provide a visual representation for studies to understand certain concepts instead of encouraging students to create something. Number three, the impact of algorithm learning was more inclined to attributes such as motivation, knowledge, conceptual understanding, and even certain domain of 21st century skills only, but not all. Number four, many computational thinking based modules have been constructed and developed from past research, but most of them were designed specifically for traditional class mode only, but not for the virtual class mode. And most importantly, only a few researchers related to algorithm learning conducted in the context of Malaysia education, especially in physics learning of secondary schools. In conclusion, there's a need for conducting researchers in the future with the aim of developing an ICT based module particularly algorithm-based module, in, which can be integrated in the digital learning environment in order to enhance 21st century skills of students in physics learning. Students are hoped to be well-prepared and well-equipped with essential skills, which prepare them to be ready for coping with future uncertainties. It was proposed that a digital learning-based learning module for physics using algorithms should be developed based on assessment physics contents in order to be implemented into virtual project-based learning so that it overcomes the limitation of physical experiments that could not be conducted due to pandemic. With that, I thank you. All right, thank you everyone. So if uh, you have any questions, you may ask me. Yes, let's open to a Q&A session. Please unmute your mic if you'd like to talk or raise your hand. Um, thank you, uh, Byron, uh, uh, for the for your comment. Okay, uh, basically, I was just sharing about the concept paper because, uh, uh, in fact, uh, I would like to propose this project uh, uh, as my research or studies. Uh, they will be implemented uh, for the future studies uh, because uh, due to the pandemic or due to the uh, restrictions of time, so I actually have not be uh, begun the project. Uh, so, of course, I. Uh, in the future, I hope that I can conduct the studies and then I will be sharing more about uh, what are the outcomes of my studies. Right, thank you. All right, good job, Mr. Benny. Uh, so now I believe uh, we have come to the last presenter of the day, which uh, is uh, 
Madam Firus Alia Binti Fazil from SMK Teluk Datuk Selangor. Please welcome. I start the timer when you're ready. All right, uh, please allow me to introduce uh, Madam Pyrus' um, research, which is implementation of voice out project with VDR VRR technique improves biology essay writing performance among Farm 6 students. Are you ready? Yes, Assalamualaikum. Can you hear my voice now? Yes. Yeah, I'm ready. Can you hear my voice? It's breaking, right? Or is it me? Is it just me? It's a, it's a little bit uh, lagging. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like yeah. Yes, I'm I'm very... Okay. Hello, Asanko. Good, good evening. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? Yes, we can. I think it's okay now. Yes, yes. Okay, I am uh, in biology. Jago Pyrus. Right, for Farm 6 students. Hello, Jago Pyrus. Hello, uh, can you post a video for me? Okay, okay. Okay, Sufian, okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, to the organizers and participating researchers, Assalamu alaikum and good evening, everyone. It is a privilege for me to be participating in this third international conference in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I'm Faruz Alia Fatzil from SMK Terodato. We'll present my research paper entitled Implementation of Voice Out Project with VDR VRR Technique Improve Biology AC Writing Performance Among Form 6 Students. To produce excellent students in science, technology, and innovation in the 21st century, good academic achievement in biology is essential as biology is one of the important disciplines in science, technology, and innovation. For students in the Biological Science stream of Sinjil Tinggi Pelajaran Malaysia or STPM, achieving excellent results in every examination, including the biology subject, examination is highly desirable. Essay is one of the important items in the evaluation of STPM biology paper, where the percentage of marks allocated for this item for each three STPM biology paper is high, which is at 50%. So it is important for students to answer the SC items well to get a high overall mark score. However, as a Form 6 biology teacher, I found that students could not answer the essay questions well, and the marks obtained while answering essay questions throughout the learning session are often low. Based on this monthly test evaluation where students getting C and D grade clearly shows that these students had trouble answering the AC question well. Students fail to provide important contents in answering AC questions, unable to remember important contents, confused with the arrangement of important contents, and using inaccurate terms in their AC. 
So to overcome these problems, I came up with an innovative learning method called Voice Up Project using the VDR VRR technique to improve students' performance in writing biology essays. The research objectives are to improve students' essay writing performance and in turn improving students' achievement in examinations, to improve students' ability to remember and to explain the important contents of a biological concept in writing a biological essay. This research involved three biology students from my NS2 class. In this study, survey of the problem was done through diagnostic, diagnostic tests and interviews. Diagnostic tests are given to assess students' performance in writing biological essays based on the usual teaching and learning methods. Interviews were conducted to identify the factors that hinder students to answer essay questions well. From the diagnostic test analysis, two students failed in this test and another student was partly passed with D plus grade. This shows that with the usual teaching and learning methods, students fail to present the important contents correctly and accurately in essay writing. From the interviews, students stated that they were often unable to present the important contents in an essay which caused them to fail to get marks. Although they understand, they are not able to explain the concept excellently in essay writing. The main reason is they cannot remember the facts well. Students agreed that they had trouble remembering facts because they do not have effective techniques for remembering facts. Their usual practice of reading the facts of a biological concept using reference books and notes is quite boring, less motivating and less effective. So again, to overcome these problems, WhatsApp project using the VDR VR technique was implemented. Three important concepts, which are Krebs cycle, Kelvin cycle, and C4 pathway were selected in this project as they are often asked in STPM biology paper. At the beginning of the project, students are provided with a paper sheet containing a biological concept. This is an example of Krebs cycle concept sheet. Let me explain further about this learning method. Once students get a concept sheet, students begin to implement the voice up project using the VDR VRR technique step by step systematically. In the first step, visualize, students examine the diagram in the sheet provided. Students observed each step in the diagram and began to recall the important contents to describe each process involved. In draft step, students produced a script on the concept by referring to various references. In rehearsal step, students practiced explaining the concept to strengthen their memory in remembering the concept facts. Next step, students began to voice out, which is explaining the concepts while recording their explanation. Students used their own creativity in recording and eventually produced an interesting voice out video. In the final step, inspired by the information sharing culture, Students downloaded their videos to social sites such as Telegram and YouTube, allowing them to replay the video in future to strengthen understanding and memory. Once completed a project, students once again run the voice up project by repeating the VDR VRR technique systematically. In this study, each student implemented three voice up projects regarding to the Krebs cycle, Kelvin cycle, and C4 pathway concept. Students eventually produced three voice up videos throughout this study. Now, let's talk about the implementation of the study. First of all, pre tests were given to the, to the three students involved before the intervention. Pre tests were given to find out the level of student performance in biology essay writing. Pre tests were conducted three times as students conducted three voice up projects. Pre test results were then analyzed just descriptively as percentage. This is an example of a pretest question. Next, the voice up project was implemented as intervention. Students were informed about the objective, the VDR, VRR technique, and being added in a telegram group, which served as a collaborative and support system for students throughout the project. The time given to produce one voice up video is one week. Students are given autonomy to implement this project according to their creativity, time, and place. Student refers to various references as well as discuss with each other to get ideas. And I, as a teacher, 
facilitate students throughout the project. So to summarize all together, students implemented three voice art projects by systematically used the VDR VRR technique produced three voice art videos in three weeks duration. These are the students' scripts. And this shows the students' voice art video display. Let me play the video a bit. Here is the craft cycle. Firstly, the acetyl CoA will add its two carbon, which is an acetyl group, to the oxaloacetate to produce the C chat. This shows the telegram group. Moving on to the post test. Post tests were given after the intervention to determine the level of student performance in writing biological essays. The post test was conducted three times, each time each intervention completed. Post test results were analyzed descriptively as percentage. This is, a, this is an example of a post test question. Questionnaires were also given to students to obtain feedbacks on the implementation of the voice up project. Data obtained from the questionnaires were analyzed using mean and percentage descriptive statistics. Let's move on to the research findings. Pre-test and post-test data were analyzed to identify whether the implementation of WhatsApp project by using VDR VRR technique can improve the performance of students' biological AC writing. From this table, each student was found to show an increase in the average percentage in each post-test compared to each pre-test. Student 1 got A grade in the post-test compared to C grade in the pre-test with an increase of 44%. Student 2 got also got, got also A grade in the post-test compared to F grade in the pre-test with an increase of 94%, while student 3 got A minus grade in the post-test as compared to F grade in pre-test with an increase of 73%. From this analysis, 100% of students managed to get a full pass in the post-test compared to the pre-test where only 33% of students got a full pass and 67% of students failed. Overall, the level of student achievement was increased in the post-test. So it can be concluded that the implementation of WhatsApp project by using the VDR VRR technique improved the performance of students' biological essay writing. For the feedback questionnaire analysis, the mean score for all items in this questionnaire was found at the highest level of 5, so the average overall mean for all items is 5. This shows that the level of student feedback on the implementation of WhatsApp project is very good. Students strongly agree that implementation of WhatsApp project improved the skills of explaining and the memory of the important contents of a biological concept, helped produce better AC writing and increased understanding. Students also rated these interventions as as engaging, increased interest in learning biology, increased motivation to learn biology, encouraged active participation in the biological learning process, and improved communication skills. As a reflection in the study, I would like to highlight three aspects, which are teachers, student performance, and the teaching and learning process. This intervention challenges teachers to be effective facilitators. Teachers need to be wise in guiding students throughout the teaching and learning process as well as provide support and, and encouragement to students so that they are always motivated in performing tasks. The percentage increase in students' scores in the post-test shows that the implementation of WhatsApp project by using the VDR VRR technique successfully improved the performance of students' biological AC writing. This learning method allows students to process, remember, explain, and write the important contents of a biological concept more effectively in AC writing during examination. Students eventually get high marks that further improve their biological AC writing achievement performance. Voice up project learning method by using VDR VRR technique which applies elements of 21st century learning is effective in providing an attractive student-centered learning environment. Active involvement of students in the learning process such as processing information in visual and oral form, then preparing a draft script for concept explanation, then doing exercises to explain concepts, then explaining concepts while producing video recordings, and finally sharing knowledge through video recordings with other friends can improve creativity and communication skills. In conclusion, the voice up project by using the VDR VRR technique can serve as, as can serve as an alternative learning method based on 21st century learning that can help improve the performance of biology AC writing of 6 biological science students. 
finally, I recommend it for the study. I send it to other biology topics, both semester one, semester two, and semester three. And also, can be extended to other subjects such as physics and chemistry. And here are some of my references. With that, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, everyone. All right, let's move on to the Q&A session. All right, uh, there's a question on the chat box here. From Mr. Byron. Mr. Byron, Mr. Arabat. Hello, can you hear my voice? Yes. yes. Okay, hi, hi. Uh, so Byron say uh, the students, they can understand, you can understand the biology concepts, but they are unable to recall the key points. Do you agree that we teachers have to seriously think about developing students' lots as well? Yeah, uh, I agree with that because uh, first thing first, they, all the students, uh, they need to really understand the basic things. Okay, uh, not only the hot, they also have to master the lots uh, aspect so that uh, when they're given any questions, then they can uh, answer the questions well. So yeah, lots and hearts together, both of the aspects are very important. All right, thank you, Mr. Byron. Any other questions from the floor? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Benny. All right, I think that's all. Thank you, uh, Cikgu Adya. And with that, I think um, it's a wrap for our uh, presentation session today. Thank you all for enlightening and informative uh, presentations. Hopefully, all the sharings done today will be useful in our teachings later. Okay, uh, so on... Uh, uh, um, as the chairperson and on behalf of the host, Encik Sufyan, we humbly apologize for any shortcomings during the event. Once again, on behalf of the committee also, we thank you for delivering such insightful sharing so that all of us can learn from each other. All right, with that in note, again, I thank you all. Please do not forget to join the closing ceremony later in which we will announce the best presenter. Okay, before, before that, let's have a group photo session. Please everyone turn on your camera. We'll share the attendance link one more time after the group photo session. Cik Sufian, Cik Sufian. Okay. Thank you. Okay, macam tadi. Uh, stay on camera. Sedangkan kira sampai 15. Okay. Get ready. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, thank you all. Okay, Josephine, can you share the attendance link? Okay, already been shared.
Okay, so uh, we hope to see you again, inshallah, in the near nearest future, probably in the nearest uh, conference. All right, thank you to all presenters for your cooperation and enlightenment. Bye. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bye, Farhani. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Salam.